People have since the 90s had a particular obsession with giant mechanical robots. Whether it be through Disney movie hit The Iron Giant in 1999, or the more mecha style hit from Japan in Mobile Suit Gundam. Mecha, which is described as humanoid mobile robots, which basically translates to humans piloting giant robots or machines. Mecha's mechs or battle mechs, whichever you prefer to call it ultimately, is a very popular niche genre among fellow nerds across all platforms. As it pertains to gaming, however, mecha-based games haven't been nearly as common nor successful. Instead, battle mechs, the less flashy, more militaristic style of mechs, have prevailed. The most prominent franchises in the world of mechanical death is none other than the Mech Warrior franchise. Mech Warrior, hailing from the late 80s and early 90s, easily being one of the most popular IPs in the genre of battle mechs, being set in the Battletech tabletop universe. I personally loved me some Mech Assault 2 Lone Wolf back in the day on the Xbox in 2004. Something about the way that the game was animated and the mechs themselves feeling so unique and yet fun to use. I'm also a huge Gundam fan. So yes, mechs or mechas, battle mechs, I'm a fan of all of them. The market for battle mech online games sort of shriveled up as Mech Warrior stopped making more games, and frankly put out a less than stellar initial product in Mech Warrior Online 2013. I am glitched. Uh, my corpse. This is sort of where Hawken steps into the frame. Hawken, a mech-based game developed by a small team of devs at the Adhesive Game Studio, an indie company, was announced in the works in 2011. What made Hawken unique in the battle mech world was the combat was very quick and more so designed on small maps, sort of like an arena shooter. This was an interesting and sort of unique trait to Hawken. This meant that maybe Hawken could attract fans of all games, instead of just the same old mech fanatics. Hawken was also a first-person shooter only, which allowed it to focus on the immersion and excitement that you get when you're in the cockpit of a death-dealing machine. What started off as a new exciting addition to the battle mech genre became another cautionary tale in game development. Hawken still exists in some capacity today. It has a port on the Xbox One and PS4, though its original PC launch was ultimately shuttered. In the current as of 2019 population stats on both of the ports are less than stellar. How did Hawken, an arena-style shooter attempt at the mech universe, fail to make a lasting impact in the market as a whole? Join me on this journey, detectives, as we uncover the clues and build the case surrounding the death of a game, Hawken. And near the end of the video, I will pull out my journal and recap everything for those who missed the clues along the way. You might want to buckle up for this one too, and I hope you aren't claustrophobic, because I think missiles are incoming. The story of Hawken begins with its earliest announcement on March 9th, 2011. Adhesive Games, an indie developer with just nine people working on the project, had quite the future ahead of them based on the quality of the footage they were able to boast in such a short time. Adhesive Games likely, as with most creative-based ventures, put out that gameplay as a proof of concept to aspiring investors and the like to create interest and hopefully fund their yet fully developed Project Hawken. More details were revealed the next year, August 2012, on Hawken including the announcement of Adhesive Games having a publisher in Meteor Entertainment. Hawken would use the Unreal 3 engine, and Adhesive Games were targeting a December 2012 launch, which would just be a few months later. Publisher Meteor Entertainment wouldn't just handle distribution, they would actually be funding Hawken through multiple rounds of investment funding. Funding that would, as early as 2012, total in $10 million raised for the development of Hawken. Near the end of that year, in October, that number would raise to $18 million. The investors included Benchmark Capital and Firstmark Capital. These were the same investors that took a chance on the now mega-hit League of Legends. What started as an indie project, hoping to make a mark in the sea of video games, became a game in Hawken that was going to have to do more than just satisfy expectations. It was going to have to surpass them. Acquiring north of 18 million in funding, and being a studio that solely develops one game, Adhesive Games and Publisher Meteor Entertainment alike were putting all of their proverbial eggs in one basket. Some companies take the approach of starting small and slowly scaling up. Starting a business is already difficult in itself when a majority of them are said to fail in just a couple of years. 
But starting a company out of the gate, and in this case cooking with gasoline or large amounts of money, could either end up in being a successful game or a terrifying fire. If Hawken wasn't going to be a huge hit, there were going to be some angry investors who expected their money back. And investors usually always get their money back. Meteor Entertainment would surely scale up adhesive games in order to work on a project of the magnitude they were now striving for. A nine-person dev team wouldn't be enough. Meteor Entertainment had reported 34 employees as of early 2012. Near the end of the year, however, they had already scaled up to 75 employees. Whether this just means Meteor Entertainment themselves as a publisher company, or it also includes more hires for adhesive games working on Hawken, we're not really sure. Whichever the case, this meant that the risk of failure increased ever so slightly. The more people that you hire, the more money that you spend, the more money you spend, the higher expectations, the higher expectations, well, the higher the risk. It wasn't helping matters that the CEO of Meteor Entertainment, Mark Long, was doing interviews stating that he thought, Hawken has what it takes to fill the shoes of League of Legends and perhaps even overtaking the online gaming franchise. Mark Long would also state with Hawken that they were expecting more than 100 million in revenue and between 5 to 10 million players the next year. Now this could just be a CEO doing what he does and overselling his product, or it could be Mark Long letting everyone know how much of a success that Hawken needed to be in order for the whole ship to not just go under. December 2012 and Hawken officially launched into open beta. This marked the first time money was able to be spent in the game, which for many review sites prompted an open beta of impressions, or a review if you will. On aggregate review site Metacritic, Hawken was able to score 73 out of 100 from 7 critics, and a 7.7 .7 out of 10 user score. PC Gamer remarked about Hawken being a beautiful and competent shooter with some depth, and that the reviewer hadn't felt as physically connected to a first-person game since Mirror's Edge. High praise. However, PC Gamer and other critics like Rock Paper Shotgun had to point out that the matchmaking in the game was certainly a problem. In fact, it was non-existent. In fact, if matchmaking did exist, it seemed like it actually broke the matches the majority of the time, instead of functioning as some sort of matchmaking system. Rock Paper Shotgun pointed out that they often had matches where the enemy team had four times the collective rank. What was most worrying about Hawken and Open Beta was its monetization system. Being a free-to-play game, it allowed for anyone to download and play the game. However, like with most free-to-play games, they need a certain hook. A hook, if you will, that allows them to continue to make money, whether it be through costumes, power-ups, XP boosts, and the like. And like Mark Long said, Hawken was looking to learn and drive inspiration from the League of Legends business model. In Hawken, you basically had to spend money in order to change the appearance of your mech. And although this is similar to LOL, the difference with a mech-based game is players are sort of already expecting a greater level of control over the customization of their mech, as it's a core aspect of such a game oftentimes. So instead of coming across as a mech-based game, they took the business model of a hero-based game in League of Legends, and Hawken wasn't really a hero-based game. In order to make money as a free-to-play game, they had to slow down the progression and make mechs purchasable for $10. The problem arises in League of Legends certainly didn't start by charging people out the gate, and its champions could absolutely be reliably earned through gaining the in-game currency. The skins in League of Legends are transformative. They can really change the look and feel of a hero. In Hawken, you could spend $10 to buy enough currency to buy a single plain-colored skin to only use on one mech. Oh, and that's right, in Hawken, you paid for each customization change individually, not a lump sum prize like in League of Legends. With the average price of a skin in League of Legends being $7 or so, by comparison, Hawken would require you to spend at least $15 for the equivalent in customization. Except, well, it still wasn't really equivalent. You see the problem here. The model itself certainly seemed heavier handed than the game they were trying to implement after, in ways of monetization at least, and this would continue to be a problem throughout the life of Hawken. When you have so much money riding on something however, a safe and slow approach to monetization might not be viable. The combat in Hawken was clearly its crowning feature. The ability to use movement and superior aim to dominate a target, or use your jet thrusters to fly above an unsuspecting target, or maybe your Hellfire missiles to nail down a target from afar, the mech gameplay overall was impressive in Hawken. 
Hawken had nine different classes and a handful of maps that were designed to be small so that the game could focus on having a fast-paced shooter feel. You've got lightweight mechs, medium-sized mechs, and the like. Each class or mech having a different type of playstyle or difficulty rating. Hawken had five different game types. Team Deathmatch, Deathmatch, and a co-op mode, as well as two other special game modes in Missile Assault and Siege. In Missile Assault, pilots must defend their team's base using missile silos around the map. These missiles attack the enemy base and the last base standing wins. In Siege, it's similar to Missile Assault, but the main difference is that instead of it being missiles to destroy the enemy base, you collect energy in order to summon a giant battleship that attacks the enemy base. Same concept. Unlike typical Mech Warrior style games, which had big open maps, with a lot more variety in size and mechs as well, Hawken focused more on smaller arena style shooter maps. Like in games like Halo, this meant that team focus fire was often more of a focus over strict one versus ones. Hawken in some ways was seeming to be stuck in between being an arena shooter and trying to also plant its roots as a mech game. With it being difficult to customize your mech, and the majority of maps being smaller by nature, this meant that the most important aspect of Hawken, and frankly its most redeeming aspect according to the impressions from open beta at the time, was its combat. Will the great combat in Hawken be enough to push the game into a full launch at a later date? The likeliness of such was looking doubtful already, because although Hawken was certainly getting positive reviews, many critics and reviewers were afraid about the longevity of the game, with few maps and a not so great matchmaking system. The future for Hawken was already looking uncertain. Hawken would receive a large update in September of 2013, gearing up for their Steam launch the next year. The Ascension update, as it was dubbed, contained, according to Adhesive Games, massive updates, changes, and improvements planned for Hawken. The bulk of these changes were considering customization and mechs. Old optimization systems for starters would be replaced by the tuning system. As your pilot level increases, you gain more tuning points to invest into your mech. These tuning points are much like leveling up your mech's power. They increase stats like speed, health, and etc. With progression being tied behind a pilot level, instead of individual mech classes, this turned the mech levels into ranks. I don't quite think that Adhesive Games knew what to expect after making these grand changes, with as far as we know as well, little to no testing, because you already had a bad matchmaking system in Hawken. Now combined with the fact that the veteran players were not only going to be fully leveled in their new mechs, but also this would afford them faster shooting speeds, movement speed buffs, and even more armor? What started as an arena shooter in Hawken quickly became a typical free-to-play style game that rewards those who spend money to circumvent grinding in order to increase in power so you can stomp those who don't. It's an obvious switch in game focus for Hawken. That's easy to speculate that it's because of an increased need in monetization for the budding title. Adhesive Games certainly wasn't doing itself any favors putting out stories like the following and assuring people that they don't want their new progression system to become a grind, which is exactly what they created. The Hawken Ascension update is the first of many big balancing changes that in some size negatively affected the game. The new tuning point changes would stay in effect until the following year, in 2014, making 2013 a quiet year for Hawken. And with player metrics still hidden at this point, it was difficult to gauge how well the title was doing. The quietness came to an end in February of 2014, when it was announced that Hawken would be launching an early access on Steam. With this news of the early access launch, also came news of more sweeping balancing changes, this time affecting the time to kill in the game. Now, this is a very important thing to realize. Time to kill is a sacred thing for an arena shooter. It's way too far in either direction, either too fast to kill a target, or too slow, and you can ruin the feel of the game. And when the combat and the feel of such a game is the main breadwinner, if you will, in this case, Hawkins' main breadwinner is its combat, it's a dangerous gambit. Adhesive Games and publisher Meteor Entertainment needed Hawkins to do well following their Steam launch. And this was the first time player numbers for the game are known, and Hawkins peaks at a respectable 8,357 players for its Steam launch. However, by the summer of 2014, Hawkins loses over 75% of its population. In response, Meteor Entertainment, the publisher of Hawken, is forced to shut down one of its offices in order to restructure the company. Shortly after, the CEO Mark Long steps down as well, and the company is shortly after shuttered. 
By spring of 2014, Hawken was without a publisher, and had already raised and likely spent most of its now $28.5 million budget. It's safe to say the title was in development hell, without word on what the future was for the already troubled mech shooter Hawken. With 2014 coming to a close, population on Steam dropping to very low levels, and next to no major changes launched for Hawken, the game's future was already so unsure. Some level of clarity was established in March of 2015, when Hawken was acquired by Reloaded Games Incorporated, the at the time owners of APB Reloaded. This acquisition was overall taken with mixed reviews from the community. As the Eurogamer article states, Reddit user Novinha was a veteran APB Reloaded player. This is the version of APB that Reloaded Productions had established. This veteran APB Reloaded player has some choice words to say about the recent acquisition. This acquisition is both a blessing and a curse. Similarities can be drawn between this acquisition and that of APB. Yes, you'll be able to enjoy your game for a bit longer, but it will all go downhill afterwards. Well, if that wasn't particularly ominous. But Novinha has a point here. Considering I did a death of a game on APB, it very much became a title that while being bought by Reloaded Productions certainly extended its life cycle, the game would only continue to hobble on its meager existence after that. Rife with some of the more egregious microtransactions in an MMO period, forcing you to buy guns temporarily and the like. Hawken would survive 2014, but at what cost? Two thousand fifteen wouldn't prove to be a better year for the dying mech shooter in Hawken. Most of the year was spent working on a port for Hawken from PC to Xbox One and PS4. So while the PC audience continued to completely die out, Reloaded Games, as Reloaded Productions was now dubbed, was focused on attracting an entirely new audience on the consoles. This meant that more than a full year was dedicated to not focusing on the original PC launch. Reloaded Games would launch Hawken on consoles in the summer of 2016. The reaction to the launch on console was even more muted than the PC launch, the PS4 port especially being received as poor. The success following the console launch was at least enough to warrant more involvement from Reloaded Games, who then used the opportunity to push out a major patch on the PC. They weren't giving up just yet. This was the first major patch in two to three years for Hawken. This major patch brought Hawken to a full release state, removing its open beta status. The only news release I can find about this is on Steam in the archives. It didn't seem like Hawken was generating any buzz anymore, likely due to the original fanbase long having had abandoned the title when they changed balancing over and over again. If there's one thing about a core audience of a game, they are very sensitive when it comes to the overall feel and combat aspect of a game, especially a game in Hawken which focuses so much on that aspect. The population barely moves according to the Steam charts following the update. Hawken on the PC as 2017 came to a close was seeming like it was running low on power cells. It didn't matter how much better reloaded games made Hawken, they had little resources and even littler players. If they were unable to even get enough players for matchmaking to properly function, no amount of changes would fix that. The end of Hawkins' PC journey came on October 2017, when Reloaded Games announced that they would be shutting down the PC Steam servers to refocus development efforts. In other words, this means that they had to focus on the console ports, which at the time had at least done better than the PC was doing. Hawken would be removed from Steam in January of 2018. It is only playable to those with the original game data. A private server does exist, but the PC version of Hawken just about died in early 2018. The cause of death? Well, we'll get to that. As of 2019, Hawken on the Xbox One and PS4 still exists. Its presence on either platform, however, is minimal at most. On all combined platforms, Hawken has less than 100 players playing. So although Hawken's not completely dead yet, it's certainly looking like Curtains is the only option for the title that started from its humble beginnings and unfortunately failed to fulfill its ultimate expectations. Why did the action-packed, mech-based arena shooter in Hawken fail as a multiplayer title? It's about that time in the video I can pull out my journal, gather my clues, and attempt to make a deduction on why Hawken died. Hawken started as an indie project and was quickly scaled up to much larger. It could never quite satisfy the costly expectations. 
Hawken was caught in between being a mech game and an arena shooter. Was it Quake or was it Mech Warrior? This is a lack of distinction overall that certainly hurt their design. Lack of proper matchmaking in a test environment meant that anytime changes happened, it would nearly always result in a net loss of players, a constant hemorrhaging of population. Every major update in Hawken further messed up gameplay balance, ultimately souring the core fanbase who might have been loyal enough to stay with the game otherwise. Meteor Entertainment, Hawken's first publisher, scaling up the project to $28 million in funding and then folding sealed the fate of the once optimistic new addition to the world of mech shooters in Hawken. What was once a mystery to many, including myself, the curious tale of Hawken and its subsequent demise, hopefully now with this video, can be solved once and for all. Hawken might not have had the best management, the most marketing, and it certainly had a problematic business model, but what it lacked, it made up for in Spunk. Hawken's machines weren't big flashy death robots, they were more modest, almost scrap-like mechs. These ragtag looking mechs described what was the first idea of Hawken, and its original developer's adhesive game's vision. The idea of taking something small and making a big impact on something. It's almost like the mechs themselves could describe what adhesive games had meant as a small indie company. Unfortunately, it seems that the curse of the mech or mecha or whatever you would like to call it genre is still quite present. Mech Warrior Online might not be dead, but it hasn't had the best response since its launch back in 2013. With Mech Warrior 5 on the horizon, an RTS title Battletech set in the Battletech universe that launched back in 2018, at least the genre doesn't seem to be dying quite yet. Something about mech games, we have a rather high expectation for how one should play, probably because we hope one day to play it in an arcade, our dreams, or maybe even real life. Thanks for watching, guys.